you you cool with the storyline of what you're doing and not realizing what's finna happen. So when I let off the rounds and I turn up the street, I go back around the block up to the up to where I was going. But as I was going, I get a phone call. I see who it is. I don't answer. I hang. Why he calling me? Come in, this dude don't even talk. So I go to the top of this street where I see this, where, where I seen dude at. It's kids out here. I don't know, it, it look like a block party out there. You know what I'm saying? You'd have thought I'd been at the gun range or something. I stopped at the top of the street, let the window down, got comfortable. Let off about 30 rounds right there on the whole block. I'm talking about, I'm watching the shells. They bouncing and hitting the car, hitting the window. Ping, ping. They hop, one of them bounce on my arm. Ping. Look at the shells jumping out of this thing. And the whole time, I'm thinking I'm very militant at the time. I'm excited at the time. That's how I knew I was a little thrown off. Just the sound of it poof, 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 was making me excited. It made me feel like I was doing something. I said, but this is crazy. Now when I look back at it, I'm thinking, what, what was I doing? What if I hit a child? What if I hit somebody grown? But at the time, the only thing I was concerned about was the storyline. And then when I do it, I put the gun, I put the, I put my homeboy back in the car. My homeboy said, boy, you weren't playing with I said, I ain't got no time for these people. You know what I'm saying? Because for some reason, every time something going on, I talk to myself. So I put the, put my homeboy back in. My homeboy said, you ain't going to put the seatbelt on? I said, for what? We already living reckless anyway. I rolled the window back up. Pull off. When I pull back off, my phone rings again. It's, the, it's, it's, it's dude again. I answer the phone. Hello? And I answer the phone aggressively because I'm already mad. My homeboy said, hey. He said, man, I'm telling you. He said, man, my granny just called me. He said, my granny said, your name is on the scammer. And the call on the scammer. He said, man, you might, might want to get out the scammer. I said, man, I ain't stunned no scammer. I said, man, they finna read about me. I hang up. When I hang up the phone, pull off. I pull off. When I come around the corner, I said, I'm finna get my man. I'm finna go right back to where I just let off of all of these shots. Back to the same area. I pull up at this stop sign. And while I'm at this stop sign, I see an unmarked car, but at the time, I don't realize it's an unmarked car. It looks like a regular car. That's why they call them unmarked. So as I'm looking at this car, for some reason, I noticed the person in the car started to shift their body and move downward in their seat as if they were trying to hide from me. So when I looked, I seen them doing this right here. And I, I said, man, that's Bobo. It's the police. I said, and Bobo, one of them police is in the city. I don't know if y'all got a certain police officer or, you know what I'm saying, or a detective or somebody. When everybody see him, you like, up, oh, up, oh, time to go in. It's over for the night. That was him. Anytime he ride through the hood, he was the one where it's like, oh, oh it's over with. Then you call your homeboy, hey, bro, oh, yeah, I just came out of the store. I just seen Bobo. Oh, yeah, Bobo out. Yeah, yeah, you might want to, yeah, all right. He, he the one you call around and tell everybody, hey, I just seen, I just seen Bogle, bro. Yeah, I was just riding down the street. I just seen him. Yeah, he in a Pontiac. The red one? Yup. Yeah. That's one of your sales? Oh, he must have got them then. Cause Bogle was one of them. Bogle one of them. He, 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 he kept, he catch one of his, he catch one of them people you serve him. He make a deal with him. He drive their car. He, he got their phone. He texting you and everything. Yeah, pull up, meet me at the one stop. He, he one of them. He gonna get his money. He gonna, he gonna get a drug deal off the street. You going to jail. So look, check, check this out, check this out. So when I see him, I hit it. <laughs> Turn into a high speed chase. This, this is probably high speed chase number four. If you wanna hear about this high speed chase, I need you to get in the comment section and say, man, I wanna hear the high speed chase story. But look, okay, so boom, look, check this out. Let me tell you something real quick. See, what, what people need to understand this. When you live in a certain type of life, you got to realize the consequences that come with the life. When you make certain decisions in life, you got to realize that you have to also be willing to live with them. Because what people don't realize in the streets is it takes five seconds for you to get into a situation that'll take you a lifetime to get out of. But you're so caught up in the storyline of it, the hype of it, and the talk about it in the hood, that you will do it anyway. For some reason, it's not registering with your brain. In the life that I was living at the time, that's what I was going through. And see, I really did not understand that this was not a good way of living until my last probably two and a half, three years in prison. It might not even took that long. It was some point in there where I was like, man, you know what? I was really tripping. I was really caught up in the wrong things. And it, and it took for me to start to open up the word 
and start reading the word for me to see myself. But see, people don't want to read the word. People, because of the, the world that we living in now, everybody want to follow these trends. They want to hop on what's, what, what, what looks cool. They want to burn sage. They want to do this. They want to talk to the ancestors. They want to talk to the universe. They want to do all these other things that's trending. But what, what, what you come to find out is that the majority of that is not even working for the majority of people. And I had so I get so many people asking me, was it prison that changed me? It was not prison. To change me. This is not behavior modification. See, people feel like, oh, he went to prison and he got scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pr prison scared me to death. Let's not get that twisted. But prison, prison didn't scare me in a bad way as if I could not handle it. Now, could I handle it? No. Don't want to handle it. But it's certain things that, certain situations that life puts you in, you're forced to handle it. I had no choice but to handle it. People, nobody goes to jail and say that I'm able to survive jail you or prison. You step in jail or prison and you realize either, either you survive or you die. One of the two. And I, and I chose to survive. But see, my last two and a half to three years when I ran across my uncle who was doing 75 years for a kidnapping charge who had changed his life and gave his life to Christ. After watching him under those circumstances, watching his behavior, watching his mannerism, watching his character, watching how he treated people and how treated how people treated him, I realized, you know what, it's not bad for a gangster to turn to a decent person. I'm not gonna say a good person, I'm not gonna say a perfect person. I said it's it's not bad for a gangster to turn into a decent person. I, I never liked the gangster label. I I never I never was obsessed with the label. People are people people are, are cool with being called beasts and all of these things under the sun except being a decent person. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what, let me let me give that a try. And I can honestly wholeheartedly with everything in me say now to this day. I wish I would have made this decision a long time ago because the first thing it did was it removed and got people away from me that was not supposed to be around me. Because those people People are the ones who try to pressure you into being what the world calls you to be versus who the most high is calling you to be because who the most high is calling you to be what the people in the world the people who you don't supposed to be around what they gonna do is they gonna try to make you out to be corny they gonna try to make you out to be lame they gonna try to make you out to be everything that does not align with who they want you to be and they gonna try to put that pressure on you and make you fold and make you jump back into the life and be something that you really hate being you have, it's nobody in the streets who can tell me they enjoy being who they are. Never, ever, 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 ever did I enjoy being who I was. Even after I was sleeping with all the women, all the women, it didn't matter how much money I had. It didn't matter how much clout I had. It didn't matter how much status I had. I was never into making people fear me. But the the, the but knowing but having but knowing that people were scared, I was never into knowing people were afraid of me. My mom and my dad both always told me people who are scared of you they'll kill you and people wonder why when you look at the king vons of the world when you look at the when you look at the mo three when you look at all the gangster rappers these people that the people that's in the street people that we grow up with that had that kind of reputation listen to me pay attention to what happened to them not only do they get killed because people are tired of them living the way that they living and treating people how they treat them but they name also perish which is in the word they talk about how when the evil perish they name also perish these people People die and within two or three weeks you never hear about them again people never talk about them and see I never wanted my name to just die and, and, and be gone like that I have a child out here I have a family out here I don't want to be the gangster who died and then everybody just forgot about them until next year roll around on my birthday and they make a post about me I want to do something monumental I want to do something that people always remember I want to leave behind something that people just like man hey I'm telling you man it was this dude sister I I want that reputation where it lives on forever. And it's a scripture for that too. But see, this is what people don't understand. You living for the storyline. And the storyline is going to end up you being the character that's the villain. And the villain never has a good ending. Never. You in the storyline. And the storyline you're playing the villain and the villain never is victorious never they die they go to prison they have to hide they're paranoid they have to turn other people into villains they have to be controlling 
They have to be narcissistic. They have to be manipulative. They have to take advantage of people. They have to take shortcuts. They have to finesse. The villain never is able to be upright, righteous. The villain never can approach you without a hidden agenda, without a hidden motive. The, the, the villain is automatically approaching you to try to get you to be something like him. And that's how it was. Everybody who was attached to me, when I look back and I look back and I look and I read my book and I pay attention to things, it was so manipulative. I, I'll admit that. I still have to fight my manipulative ways to this day. I have to fight my, that's, that, that's one of, I'm gonna be honest with you, that's one of the reasons I don't get on live as much. I try not to, because it's for me. Now, now I have a healthy what a relationship when it comes to social media. But I know me. I know, I know, I understand me. There's certain things for me I know I just can't do all the time. Because what the enemy will get in my head and say is pay attention to the views, pay attention to the light, pay attention to how much money you make, pay attention. And before you know it, he's done, he's done, he's done grab me back in the way of life, just in a different way. And see, that's what most people don't understand. You can conquer something. But then it'll show back up in your life just in a different form. It's just not, it's just not the same thing as it's not the exact same thing. It's just in a different form. And see, that's I understand me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful for that. But but the villain is never victorious. Something always happened to him. And when you're ready for the next story, say okay, so boom in the conversation.